the more we talk to him about how grateful we are for being saved, for sending Jesus, for our, our friends, our family, the more you open yourself up for even more. And so in Psalms 95, 2, it said, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Thursday is we celebrate Thanksgiving. And make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Psalms 104. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful yes. unto him and bless his name. Instead of always bringing a prayer of what I need, what I want, what I desire, help me, I made a mess, I need you to get me out of it. Um, let's enter his gates with thanksgiving. I thank, that you give, I thank you, Lord, that you give me the grace to walk through whatever I have to walk through. And enter his courts with praise. I just praise you, Father. I praise you for who you are. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. So that's, I've been thinking about thanksgiving and gratefulness. And I was just, I was just talking to the Lord about um, some things. And I was just in my bedroom, just being grateful and thankful. And so it just came, that's how this message came. And so in verse 5 of Psalms 104, uh, 100, verse 5 says, For the Lord is good. Is he good? Yes. The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. Our mercy is not that long. But his mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. So I was looking up some words, and so this is how this came about. And I, I found it quite interesting, and I hope you do also. Gratitude is a chosen state of being. Now think about that right there. Gratitude is a chosen state of being. Gratitude involves thankfulness. But it is more than that. Gratitude means expressing thankfulness and being appreciative of life daily even when nothing exciting happens. I'm thankful. I'm grateful. Even when nothing's going on. Thankful and grateful. Gratitude is your decision that day. Is a good day even when evidence points to the opposite. As evidence that this is going to be a da bad day and everything is going south. But I choose gratitude even when I'm walking through this day. Mm -hmm. Amen. By choosing to cultivate gratitude in your life, you are actively improving your health and your well-being. A study from the University of California, Berkeley states, gratitude may be associated with many benefits for individuals, including, number one, better physical and philosophical health. Oh. When you are down, when you are complaining, guess what? Your body starts hurting in spots. Mm -hmm. You get a headache. 
Your stomach starts hurting. You're depressed. Nothing's right. But gratitude will lift you up. Number two, it increases happiness. Number three, life satisfaction decreased materialism and more. Because you look at things from a different vantage point when you are grateful. Yes, thank you. Gratitude is about being content physically and mentally with the state of your life. Mm -hmm. Philippians 4, let's go over to Philippians 4, 11. Now I'm going to start in 10. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again. Within Ye were all so careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Amen. Whatever state you find yourself in, to be content. I know now how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Do we know how to be abased? And do we know how to abound? Now the abound, we got it. We got that down pat. But now being abased, uh-uh, we don't have that. So even when you find yourself in that condition, what you do is you are grateful. You are grateful. Lord, I'm grateful. I'm, I'm in this condition, but I know I'm not going to stay here. So I'm grateful in what I'm going to learn in this place that I am in. Because there's learning in all of these places that we find ourselves in. I know, I'm, I know both how to be a base and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Now those other, the suffer need and those things, is something we don't want in our life, but there is lessons to learn even in those places. Studies have also shown the positive effects of relationships on our emotional well-being. Gratefulness or gratitude unlocks the fullness of the life that God our Father has given to us. It unlocks because you're awful grateful, you're always grateful. You're in thanksgiving and you're in gratefulness. And so it opened you up to receive more. When you're complaining and you're always um, bitter about something or you're complaining about this, it shuts you down. And it locks up the fullness of life. You can make any confession you want to make, but when you are not grateful, and you're in bitterness and moaning and groaning and complaining, guess what? The fullness of life that God has given to us is not going to manifest because there are spiritual laws associated with things. I'm going to read this again. Gratefulness or gratitude unlocks the fullness of the life that God our Father has given to us. By faith, it turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos into order, and confusion into clarity. 
And you have to think about that. When you're grateful, it opens you up for a lot more things. I don't even think we think about that, being grateful. I think we, we, we understand Thanksgiving. We thank, we thank him. You know, we're, we, we talk about how blessed we are. and We're thankful for this and that. But when you go into gratitude and you're grateful, I'm, I'm grateful that I'm saved. I'm grateful that my body works. I'm grateful for this. And I'm grateful that Jesus came and died for me to redeem me. I mean, when you go into the gratefulness, it opens you up for more. Some of this is, I was reading also out of uh, John Hopkins Medicine, um, an article that he had. But I start thinking about this and I thought, what would happen if us in the body of Christ, just <coughs> instead of complaining, moaning and groaning, got into thanksgiving and gratefulness and gratitude, just, just, just got into it. What would happen? Do you know what? Uh, your whole life would change. Things would be different. Your physical body would not have to deal with groanings, complaining, depression, all these things. It would be light. It would be lifted. And possibly some medical conditions in the body would change. Sometimes our attitude is what causes us to be infirmed. Sometimes it's working in us. So that when we make some changes, like I'm thankful, Lord. I'm thankful that I'm alive today. I'm thank you, thankful that many people thought they were going to wake up this morning, but they didn't. I'm grateful for you giving me life and that life more abundantly. I'm grateful to this morning, Lord, that I'm looking at my congregation and I'm blessed that they're here. I'm grateful for them. I'm grateful for all that you're doing. If we got into that, it would change some things, some physical things inside of us and loose some things off of us. Think about depression, which is a thing that's in the body of Christ. We can't pretend it doesn't exist. We're depressed about a lot of things. But if you got into stepping out of yourself and begin to be grateful where he's brought you, that you're still alive, you still, you still have a destiny and a purpose, and that it can still be fulfilled. There's nothing blocking that but our attitude, and our attitude, as we know, determines our altitude. Gratefulness or gratitude unlocks the fullness of the life that God our Father has given to us. Wow. I started thinking about these. I was in my bedroom and I just got really happy because I, I because I had been doing it. I had start. I had just start. Just thanking him, just just being grateful and being aware of the blessings that he has given me in my life and the people that he's put in my life. And thanking God for them and asking him to bless them even more than he's blessing them now. And so when you start thinking about that, it kind of lifts heaviness off of you. It kind of lifts the weights and the cares of this world and the things that are going on. Um, off of you, it's, it's like the incident I shared in, about the two things that happened to me this, this uh, last week and this week about the parking space. But I begin to really labor for that young man's Amen. salvation. Amen. Because I knew when I looked at him and the rage that was on his face, he parked in my parking spot on purpose because he hated God. And when I, when I went through the whole altercation, I thought to myself, this young man needs to be saved. Something has happened in his life that has brought him to this very point where he, I mean, he cussed me out, and said some things to my son, and, and got threatened my dog, and I mean, it was just, it went on. 
But I thought about it. What brought him there? I just didn't stop there. What brought him to that point in his life? And there was parking spots all over the place. He could have parked any place, but he parked in front of my door. And I, I said, Lord, I said, I thank you for bringing that young man. I'm grateful that he came and parked there because I wouldn't have met him otherwise. Now the meeting wasn't that great. <laughs> but it gave me an opportunity to pray for him. To see him. And I said, Lord, I hope I see him again mm -hmm. in heaven when he leaves this earth. And that something has changed. Now, I haven't seen him in this parking lot anymore. I don't know if he's still, I, because he works right across the way here. But I thought about <laughs> what happened in that young man's life to get him to that state. What happened? Because we don't know what happens in someone's life to turn them the way they are. And if we have the compassion of God that he has given us, then we have compassion for all men, regardless to what they've done to us or not. You know, bitterness dries the bones. When you're bitter, guess what? You are open the door for all kind of health issues problems, mental issues. Gratitude unlocks the fullness of the life that God has ordained and has given to you and I. Thankfulness fades. Gratitude or gratefulness remains. Gratitude often begins as thankfulness, because the two are kind of alike. But the difference happens when you keep your focus on everything that remains. As thankfulness fades, gratitude will stay with you. According to John Hopkins Medicine, there is a direct correlation between a positive attitude and your mental health. Think about that. We didn't need John Hopkins medicine to tell us that. But I took it out of there, so I want to give credit where I got the information. But I think about that. A direct correlation between a positive attitude and your mental health. Why do you think there's so much mental illness today? Why do you think there's so much mental illness today? Because there's not a lot of gratitude <laughs> And you can turn any station mm -hmm. to any station, television station, that you want to turn to, and it's a war. Mm -hmm. And this side is against that side, and that side is against this side, and they're calling each other names. They're like, they're like children in a playpen fighting over a bottle or a toy. Mm -hmm. And you think about, there's no gratitude. Nations are rising. Things are happening. And the mental condition of mankind is getting worse. It's not getting any better. It's getting worse. A positive attitude. I would say this. A positive outlook on your life in Christ. No matter what's going on. I'm grateful. When you think about it, whatever state you find yourself in, be okay. Because it's just a temporary thing, but it can last longer if you're not grateful. 
whatever state you find yourself in. Be grateful and ask the Lord this question. What do you want me to learn from this situation I find myself in?